Welcome to the Draeger TI500 Transport Incubator. Thank you for choosing to join our training today. Part 1 Anatomy The Incubator The Transport Cot The Draeger Monitor The Oxygen Tank Valve Wrench And the Oxygen Mixer The reminders and incubator cleaning instructions attached below for your convenience. The oxygen tank. The control center is located here and will be discussed in chapter 2. At the left of the incubator, you can find the secondary oxygen tank, the power source switch, the temperature probe socket, the transport cot battery, the neonatal drager, and once again, important info and reminders attached here. Part 2.1 Function Turning on the Incubator To turn on the incubator, press the leftmost button. Now, with a closer view, once turned on, the incubator immediately does a self-diagnostic. Any functional issues will be immediately indicated with a red light. Shown here, the green light indicates the power source in use, namely attachment to an AC-DC electrical socket, or the use of the mobile internal battery. Please note, the internal battery has a charging time of 10 hours for up to 3 hours of battery life if left unplugged. This column indicates the heater power used from 0 to 100% in increments of 25%. To its right is the temperature probe display. It displays the baby skin temperature when the probe is attached to the infant. If the display is blank, it is possible that the probe is not connected to its port on the left side of the incubator. This is the air temperature display. It shows the temperature in the incubator. If you press the set temp button, you will see the desired temperature that the incubator will reach. It can be adjusted with the up and down arrows. It is super important to note that the baby's temperature has no effect and no control on the incubator's temperature. Therefore, the incubator will work to attain the set air temperature regardless of the baby's temperature. As a result, it is important to monitor the baby's temperature frequently and adjust the air temperature accordingly. Shown here is the alarm display. At any point, if there is a malfunction, the issue in question will light up to guide and alert you. To turn off the alarm, simply press the silence button. To turn off the incubator after use, simply press the off button beside the on button. When the incubator is plugged into the electrical socket, a wavy line appears on the first column. When the incubator is running on the limited internal battery, you will see the battery icon light up, along with the alarm message. To change the power source from the internal battery to the external outlet, you must press the power source button at the left side of the unit shown here. Part 2.2 Function Interacting with the incubator To open the doors of the hand ports, gently press the quick release buttons. You will have limited movement through the disposable sleeves to interact with the infant while maintaining the internal air temperature. To close the hand port doors, firmly press the door shut until they click into place. To open the wall of the incubator, twist the wall hinges upwards and support the wall as it opens towards you. This way, you will have ample access to the infant if needed. Please ensure to close the wall and to secure it into the closed position by twisting the hinges inwards. The head door access works similarly. However, 
you are able to slide the infant's bed outside of the incubator if needed. Please remember to secure the door into place after use. Shown here is the iris port. Slightly twist the handle counterclockwise to access the patient. To close the port, turn the iris port clockwise until it is taut. As a note, underneath the bed is a humidity sponge. The sponge can be drenched with sterile water to create a humid environment for the newborn. At the foot of the bed are the vents. Please do not block the heating vents to ensure optimal air circulation and temperature control. Part 2.3 Function Incubator Accessories The Pulse Oximeter The ECG Leads the temperature probe, the blood pressure cuff, the temperature probe cover, four transport restraints. Part 2.4 Function Setup of the incubator. The Drager should be set up on the appropriate setting, which is Neo Transfer. Attach the blood pressure cuff. Attach the ECG probes as shown. White to white. Color to color. And black to black. Attach the pulse oximeter appropriately. Ensure the temperature probe is connected to its port on the left side of the unit. Lift the clear port cover and press until secured. After turning on the incubator to preheat at 36 degrees Celsius in preparation for the patient for at least 20 minutes, you can attach the four restraints to the incubator by hooking the straps to the circular eyes at the sides of the bed. To secure the child, it is best to Velcro the straps in an X formation. Leave the restraints open to receive the child. If not already done, open the oxygen tanks and test the mixer. Set the oxygen and oxygen supplies as ordered by the MD. Set the transport cot to the desired height above waist level for easy handling of the patient and the incubator. If the transport cot was not charged, the battery is replaceable. To remove the battery, press the red button on the right and slide the battery out towards the left. To replace the battery, slide it into place until you hear a click and the green light illuminates. Extra Striker brand batteries can be found at the charging station in the head nurse's office. Part 3. Scenario. Patient transport with the incubator. As a disclaimer, the oxygen should be on, the incubator should be plugged in at least one day in advance for the mobile battery, to be sufficiently charged. The transport cot should be plugged in with the battery fully charged or replaced. The drager plugged and charged, the incubator accessories and drager attached just like the previous chapter. In addition, 
the incubator should be at 36 degrees Celsius and warmed for at least 20 minutes in advance. Please bear in mind, in this example, the baby is healthy and stable. In a neonatal resuscitation example, the sequence of events would differ. Once the child is born and in need of transportation, the nurse should carefully carry the child into the incubator. If the wall of the incubator is not yet open, someone could kindly open the wall for the child to enter. In this example, the nurse will immediately restrain the child for transport. Of course, if the child is in distress, emergency measures should always be first and the restraints last. Here, the nurse will attach the ECG monitor to the baby. White will be on the right side of the child, black on the opposite, which would be the left, and green is generally on the gut or stomach of the child. Next, the nurse will attach the pulse oximeter to the baby. Please ensure that the two red lights are glowing and facing one another on the child's hand or foot. Please gather all wires at the wire ports to avoid tangles and obstruction of the air vents. The temperature probe should be attached metal side down to the stomach of the patient, then covered by a temperature probe cover. A corresponding blood pressure cuff should be attached to the child's arm. The wall of the incubator should be securely closed for the transport. Then, if not already done, the ambulance should be called for transport of the child to the nearest hospital. Part 4. Extra Information Replacing the iris cover Please note that one side of the iris cover is larger than the other. Using the smaller side, please attach to the inner rim of the iris mechanism. Twist gently and with the larger side attach to the outer rim. Turn the mechanism clockwise until tight, closed and taut. To use the iris port, turn counterclockwise to open and clockwise to close. Reusable accessories the temperature probe, and transport restraints. After use, please ensure to keep the transport probe. Please do not throw away. Also, please remove the restraints to be cleaned and reused. Attached handouts, reminders, cleaning the incubator, and QR codes. Located at the lower right-hand side of the incubator, you can find a few attached handouts. Firstly, important reminders. Secondly, a step-by-step -step instruction of how to clean the incubator after use. As an important disclaimer, please only use the Clorox wipes provided for the incubator. Any other wipes can be harmful for the equipment. Lastly, two QR codes. The first one is a link to this video for review at any time for your convenience. The second one is a link to the instruction manual of the incubator for further questions that were not answered during this video. The Draeger TI500 Transport Incubator. Thank you for joining us today and hopefully this video is helpful. Filmed by Mallory and Laurie.